past three times we spoke about the idea of uh, trephas in animal lungs, particularly uh, in general about trephas, but particularly about the, the way they are found in an animal's lungs and the circles that are found there. Today we're going to speak about um, different kinds of trephas that appear in poultry. We'll use chickens as our, our main example, of course. Um, now, the, the, the one we've been speaking about, which is circles, is not something that applies to chickens by and large. Uh, the chicken lungs don't look anything like regular like animal lungs. Um, and the place we're going to speak about that basically there, we don't concern ourselves with circles except in certain specific cases, but by and large, a serotonin lung doesn't mean anything if it's, so to speak, if it's in a chicken. Um, however, the, the circa, as we've spoken about, circa is not the actual trefer. The real trefer is having a hole in the lung. Um, and having a circa is either a sign that there was a hole or that there will be a hole. So, but the inherent trefer, which is having a hole um, in the lung, is a trefer that applies to a chicken um, just like any other animal. Um, so um, we're going to talk about different kinds of trefers um, that apply to chickens. Um, as we'll see, they're not, none of them are terribly common. Uh, but we're going to speak about ones that are checked for, um, or that at some places are checking for, to see these types of trefers. Um, now, we're only going to talk about the types of trefers that are checked for that you'd only find at the slaughterhouse. Um, there are two other kinds. One is the kinds of uh, broken bones and other, you know, blood and other things that a person would find, which you could find in the slaughterhouse, and of course they look for them, but they're also found at home. We're going to speak about that sometime in the future, about a person finding those own kind of, their things those kind of things in a chicken. Um, and one thing we spoke about uh, some time ago, which was about whether um, uh, and the injections that are given to uh, chicken eggs before before they get to the shkito, whether that potentially raises a problem um, uh, making them a trefus also. Okay, so we're going to start with, with the follow. The Ram says, I, we never heard Misha Badak Oif um, no one, we never heard of someone checking a bird to see if it was a trefil, unless there was some kind of a chashash on the bird, something specific happened, like it fell down, something specific happened, otherwise no one ever checks for trefils, um, because it's very uncommon. Uh, we saw the reason we check for certain kind of trefils is because it's matsui, in birds and none of these things are matsui, and therefore the animal would be a trefil if it had the problem, but nobody bothers to check it, and those that, that, that what underlies that, which is that it's not matsui, continues to be true. Um, you know, uh, the, the Prim Godin brings it in, right, in him, in his places, in the summertime, for some reason, ducks had a specific kind of trephas, and you, even worse than ch than animal lungs, and you have to check it. Okay, but by and large, the, the facts have stayed the same, that it's very uncommon to have trephas in uh, in chickens, um, and therefore, the Ram says, no one ever checked for it. So, the question, the first thing we have to think about is, well, why is it, in fact, that we do check things now? As I mentioned, um, and I'm going to give some examples coming, um, in fact, at, at most chicken shkitas nowadays, there are a whole bunch of people who are busy checking different parts of the of the birds to make sure they're not trefers. So why is it? Why why is that happening when when the Ram says that, that it's not mostly and you don't have to check for it? So the answer to that question we can find um, is something that Ramosha speaks about. Uh, and Ramosha says like this. He says that being motsui is only one part of why we have when why and when we have to check an animal for trefers. But excuse me, but um, if it's very easy to check for the trefers, um, then it's like F shell of virus. It's very easy to check it. Then a person who doesn't check it, the virus says, is, is being it's just callous. He's just like not caring about the iser. And therefore, Ramosh is like this. The way it always was was he a person. There was a shechet. He shechted the bird, and then they they then they um, gutted it and you know took off the feathers and opened it up. And if there was any obvious signs of trefers in the bird, then the people who were doing that would notice it and they would get rid of the bird. So no one made a special effort to check for trefers, but the easy things to notice, people would notice. He says, but nowadays when the goyim are the one who do all that work, the shaykhet does the shrit, and afterwards all the taking off the feathers is probably done by a machine, but then the cutting it open and you know butchering is all done, the people who are not Jewish. So Rosh says that that's not appropriate to let them do that, and a yid should be keeping an eye on while these things happen. So if there's anything um, noticeable, anything obvious that strikes him, he should notice it and pull the animal off and say, this this animal is a trefer. And based on that, um, has become the practice that there are people checking different kinds of bird game along the lines in the, in the factory who check birds for different kinds of trefers. Okay, so now, in order to understand some of the trefers, we mentioned another din. This din is not specific to poultry, but it comes up this is where it does come up for poultry, this thing comes up, and that is as follows. 
um, as I mentioned, there are certain organs in an animal that if there's a hole in that organ, the animal's a trefer. Um, I mean, any small hole, even the smallest hole, makes the animal trefer. For our purposes and for the poultry discussion we're having, we're going to talk about four of them. We're going to focus on four of them. Lungs, hearts, the curcumin, that's the gizzard, it's sort of like a stomach, and the, the intestines, the benemiae. Okay, all four of those, if they have any hole in them, the animal's a trefer. Now, it's really unlikely that someone's going to notice an actual hole in these things. Um, uh, you know, and, and I already told you that sirchas are not a concern. Um, sirchas, in general, the, the Shukhmar says, are not a concern any place except for on the lungs. So on none of these other things would a sircha be a sign of a hole. And even on the lungs, as I mentioned to you, for a, a chicken lung, that's not a, a simon trefas. Um, so, so finding a hole, in theory, is, is a trefa, but it's really unlikely someone's actually going to notice a little hole over there. However, the Gemara says that um, if there's a, under certain circumstances, if the skin is damaged in a certain way, the skin is damaged, then it's as if that piece of skin doesn't exist, it's not there anymore. Well, if there's a piece of flesh, I'm sorry, is not, is not there anymore. If the piece of flesh is not there, then there's a hole. Uh, if it's all the way through, you know, the whole way through in, in the organ, then there's a hole. There's a hole because that piece of flesh, as if it doesn't count, it's not there. If it's not there, there's a hole. So that's something that a person m most definitely would notice if there was something, um, there's some kind of damage, I'll describe it in a second. If there's some kind of a damage in one of these organs, he noticed that he, the damage is what he would notice, that the flesh is damaged, and therefore he would notice, and to then, he would be able, then he would say, um, it's as if there's a hole, and therefore the animal would be a trafer. So the Gemara says, um, call, the way the Gemara calls this kind of damage, the Gemara says nismasmes. Um, the Rift says that that comes from the word this masmes comes over names. He says from the from the pasuk like harm kadoinag no masu. Um, so he says that, you know it's the way uh, wax melts from the fire when it gets hot it just melts away. Um, so that means that the skin is is melted or decayed or disintegrating. The, the, the more he has different cases where it talks about this. Um, the point is that there's something wrong with the skin. That the skin is 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 not the way it's supposed to be. It's, it's falling apart. It's, it's not. It's liquefying or it's gelling or it's disintegrating or drying out uh, and the Gemara says the one has a very specific criteria the Gemara says is it has to be that the skin is so hopeless it's so not possible to grow back that um, a veterinarian who was working with this animal would scrape it away he would just cut the skin out and say this skin is never going to come back and just like hope for the skin underneath it to grow underneath it and fill in the place so the Gemara gives a very specific way to know if the skin is that bad that from this mass makes to the point that the that are the right that, that they would take it away, they would scrape it away because it's so hopeless it can't grow back. That's considered as if it's not there, and um, the animal's a trafer. Um, the Machar brings that, that's what the Shokhanar says, so only in those kind of cases. But the Ramos says, but the Ramos says that we don't consider ourselves keen to be able to judge whether uh, the skin is damaged enough or not so damaged, uh, and therefore any time. The skin is you hits nimoika means like dissolved, or it's lakusa bashinu basar. It's like diseased and damaged, or it's ravenirka when it gets rotted. Uh, any of these kind of things, we look at it, we say is the animal is a trefa. We assume that it's as if there's a hole in that spot, even though there's no hole. Even though it wouldn't seem like it passes the test that the Gemara gave that it has to be so bad that you scrape the doctor, a vet would have scraped it away. Even so, the Ramah says that the animal is a trefa. Um, so, and also, the Ramah in, in one or two places talks about whether there's a Shinu Mara, if there's a change in color, whether that should be a problem. Um, most of the Achorinim are of the opinion that, the, that that's not the Din, that you're not, the, a Shinu Mara in itself, just because the change of a color is not in itself a reason to be, for it to qualify as this mass mace and therefore as if it has a hole. Um, but they say, the Primgum says, maybe if it has, if it's a Tziruf, meaning if if the damage is not so bad, <coughs> we wouldn't have worried about it. But it's also a Shinu Mara, then it is, then. That does count. Or maybe he says in other cases, what happens if there's a, a, a shinumara on a big area, and then and you notice also that there's some kind of a uh, lacusa, some kind of a damage to, to to the to the flesh, but the damage doesn't go all the way through, so it wouldn't count as a hole. Cause it wouldn't be a problem because it only you know it's sort of on, in one area, one little area, which is not all the way through to you know to make a uh, significant enough hole. So then that teaches us the color is a problem. Okay, different ways that you could possibly be mitzaref. And, and make a Shinomara count also. But the long and short is, is that in, if you notice any of these things, um, um, one of the, the organs I just mentioned to you, the heart, lungs, uh, the corcovon, um, or, or I mean, 
so on, or the intestines, the plemiarim, then in any one of those things, if you notice this this nismasme, so this kind of lacus, there's some kind of a damage to it that according to Arma doesn't have to even meet the criteria of being, you know, terrible, that it would be scraped away, then the animal is considered to be a trefa, and it's because as if that piece of flesh is missing. So uh, because of that, in many shritas, chicken shritas, um, there's a person who either visually looks at each of the birds going by or actually manually touches them to see if there's a problem. For example, he might squeeze the the corcovon, the gizzard, or, or the lungs and squeeze them. Now, lungs in, in a chicken, lungs are a bright red color or, or dark red color. Um, and when you squeeze them, they're sort of spongy, um, they have a spongy consistency to them. So if he looks at them and he sees that they look decayed, like black and, and dried out, like they're not healthy looking lungs, or if he squeezes them and they're hard instead of being spongy, um, then that bird will be not accepted. That bird will be considered to be a trailer. And some of the other ones, he touch the cork on different other parts. Either some of them just look at it just to see if it looks right, or they'll actually manually touch it just to see what it looks like. Um, and, and different shlitas do it different ways. But the long and short of it is, they're looking for something to see whether the flesh is in this mass maze, um, whether some kind of lacus is damaged enough that should qualify to as if there's a hole there. And if there's a hole in one of these avarum, then the animal is a trefa because it's it's a it's a it has a hole. Now. The, the, another thing that the, the Ramah says um, is that, um, I'm sorry, the Mechaber says is that a bua is also not a concern in any place else except for in a lung. In lungs, you know, it has specific cases where it's an issue. A bua is like a blister or something like a bubble growing on something. Um, it's not a problem if, if there are any of the other a farm. However, um, place can say it's, it's clear in the shah, um, it's, it's possibly even if the Taz says like that also says that if there's if there's a bua if there is a blister in a, on some other part and we're focusing on the bene on the intestines or there's a number of them and they don't look right then you should check to see if the bua itself the blister itself is not does not make the animal trefa but you have to wonder if maybe there's damage going on underneath it maybe it's covering up damage to the flesh of the uh, intestines and if in cane it's that damage it's that nismasmes that would make the animal into a trefer so the the boar is a reason to be suspicious about what's going on and to look more carefully and be, once you like sort of look around you may notice that there's something going on and which will make the animal into a trefer so um and now i want to give you an example a contemporary example of something where where this is what this is what happens and that is as follows something like a bull, not exactly a bull, but something like that. And that's like this. Um, when a chicken is inside the chick is inside the egg, before it hatches, um, the nourishment that it gets comes from the yolk sac. Um, and the yolk, the yolk sac is not, is sort of out of the chicken. There's, there's an egg. Inside the egg, there's a chick. And the yolk is outside the chick. Um, the way that the, the yolk is connected into the chick's intestines, the, this little chick that's growing inside there, it's connected and tested through something called the Meckles diverticulum. Okay, what's the Meckles diverticulum? It's something in the in the middle of the chicken's intestines. And the ch chicken's um, intestines, it's sort of right in the middle of that. Um, there's this little connector, a little piece of skin, a little basically like a little piece of intestine sticking out, and that it goes, it connects to the yolk sac um, th while the chicken is still inside in the egg. When the chicken is born, the chicken, I'm sorry, when the chicken is hatched then the the skin closes in around this meckles diverticulum it gets separated from the yolk it closes up and this little piece of this little protrusion sticks out of the intestine for the for the chick's life um usually i'm sorry traditionally uh, before modern farming the way in a, in a, out in the wild the way it, what happens is for the first couple of days that the chick is alive it doesn't eat much and it just continues to eat off the little bit of yolk that's left in the end of this Meckel's diverticulum. This little protrusion is still sticking out of its intestines, but it's now inside the body instead of outside the body. So it lives off the last little bits of yolk that are in there. And then once it's taken all that in, then it starts it starts actually eating, you know, like every other chicken. Um, but and at, at that point, the, the, this protrusion shrivels up a little bit, and it's usually left as a very tiny... Um, what they call an out pocket of the intestines, just a little thing sticking out of the intestines, um, and usually you wouldn't know anything more. Um, however, in, in more modern times, 
the chicken farmers want to fatten up their chickens very quickly, um, get them quickly ready for, sh for slaughter. Um, so the, as soon as they're born, as soon as they come to the farm, they'll be feeding them right away, which is, and a, a, a result of that is that the chicks will not always um, absorb all of the yolk that's left in the Mecca's diverticulum, causing potential problems as we're going to describe. So because of, as, we, as we describe the problem, as I'm, I'm mentioning that the issue appears to be something that's more modern, it appears to be something having to do with the way they feed the chickens right away when they're born, uh, when they're hatched. And because of that, we don't see any place in the place where they speak about this shy or what to do with this, this little piece of intestine. So um, usually you would never notice it at all. Never, you would never see anything about it. But sometimes um, when you look at the intestines, you see that the, the, there's something wrong with it. It's not just this little piece of skin. Again, in most cases, you really can even tell it just sticks out of, a, a tiny bit out of, out of the intestine. Um, the picture that I showed um, shows it very large relative to what's usually, usually tiny. Um, so um, when I was at Empire once, um, Rabbi Yonel Rokech, he's a Russian chef from there, um, he showed me different ways that I can come looking. Um, and almost every case was something he said, even though it looks horrible, it was not a problem. And that is to say is, um, remember, the fact that this, uh, the piece of skin is natural, of course that's nothing. The, the diverticulum that's sticking out, the mecco's diverticulum sticking out, is of course nothing wrong. That's the way the animal's supposed to grow. The animal's supposed to have one. But sometimes they look odd and dark and colored and all kinds of things. It looks strange. It's not exactly a bull, but it's like a bull. There's something strange going on over there. So, um, so what, but what we care about is not whether whether it looks bad. What we care is whether the flesh of the intestines themselves is damaged. Is there something wrong with that tech that we could say it's nismasmus, and therefore it's like as if there's a hole in the uh, uh, nukuva sadakin. Is there a hole in the in the in the intestines? So he's like this. He says, if you just, many people look at them and without experience and say, oh my gosh, this animal is a trefer. Um, but it's really not, he said, really, it's not really the truth. And what you do is like this. Usually what's going on in there, what you're seeing, the color and the, the, the odd looking thing that's in there, is just food that hasn't been digested, that got stuck in there, or some other schmutz that somehow got into there, which is nothing, doesn't mean anything. And what he, what he did is like this. He took like a little blade and just sliced open a little knife and sliced open this mechos the particular the ones that didn't look good slice it open and we slice it open then with the edge of the knife you could just flick out all the junk that's in there the, the leftover food or who knows what that's that's inside of there and as soon as you do that you see that the skin is look perfectly healthy there's nothing wrong with the skin so there's something inside there but okay something inside there that doesn't mean anything our intestines are supposed to have stuff inside them um but but the flesh that's all there looks perfectly fine there's nothing wrong with it um, and that usually tended to be when it was like black or brown, that was usually leftover food, or yellow. The yellow is usually leftover yolk, the yolk from when the chick was hatched. Um, and those were those tended to be fine. The, when there was a problem was when it would be white on the inside, uh, not clear or, or like pinkish, like healthy looking flesh, but white on the inside, that was usually a sign of infection. And there, when you cut it open, you couldn't scrape it off. Um, there was no way to scrape that off, it was, it was like attached. Uh, and the flesh that was under there looked thin and unhealthy, completely unhealthy. Uh, and those he would consider a trifle. Those he looked at and he says, these, these are considered to have, uh, they have nukuvus adakin, they have a hole in the, in the, in the dakin, in the intestines. And therefore, those would be considered to be a trifle. Okay, so that's something that people look for. Uh, usually what, just what goes on is as, as the birds are passing by on, on the production line, someone's just picking them up, looking at this, Mecca's the particular, and, and in a second, you can see if there's something wrong with it, whether it needs to be further investigation or just let it go by. And again, almost every one of them is perfectly fine. Once in a while, they pick up one that has an issue. Okay, the last thing we're going to speak about is um, Tzuma Segidin. Uh, what are the Tzuma Segidin? Um, uh, tzuma uh, a Tzermes is a, 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 a place where things come together of different Gidin, and that is every animal has this. We're talking about chickens, but it's the same issue for animals as well, which is when the um, the, the muscles that a person or an animal or a chicken has in their body are what gives able, allows them to move their bones. Um, but the muscle itself is not what moves the bone. The muscle pulls on a tendon. And the tendon is what connects the muscle to the bone. So the, um, the way an animal, a way a, a chicken moves its legs, the Gemara says there are 16 um, gidin, 16 tendons. We're not sure exactly what all 16 of them are, but if the Gemara says there are 16 tendons, um, go, and what they do is those connect the muscles in the leg down to the toes, and the, these 16 gidin come together as a tsuba the place where they all join together, and they pass through 
from the leg, from the drumstick, the bottom of that through the shank, um, that's the bottom part of the, of the chicken's leg, all the way down to the, the so to speak, toes. Um, so what they did is that if any of those gidin are cut, at the place, if you look at them where they come together, if any of them are cut, then the animal's a trafer. The animal's a in our case, we're talking about a chicken, the chicken is a trafer. Um, so the, there are two ways you could check that. You could check that on the actual uh, drumstick, it's the bottom of the leg of the, of the chicken. Um, you could check it there. Um, but you could, but that of course means cutting open the chicken's leg. Of course, you have to shave it, cutting it open over there. So instead, you could what the more commonly is that they cut open the shank. That, that's the bottom part, the, the bottom part of the leg, the part that we don't eat, the part that has the toes attached to it that gets discarded. They cut open that part. They make a slit in that, a vertical slit going down that or across that, um, and that way the person could stick their fingers underneath the gidin and then lift them up. And if you, all the gidin are together over there, and if you lift them up, if they're taut, and if they're whole, then that means the gidin were not cut. If you see one of them is cut, or they seem to be loose, like they're not attached, that tells you that further up, higher, or either there or further up, the gidin are actually cut, in which case the animals are trafer. Okay, so that's, that's the kind of trafer called uh, at the tumus of gidin, a cut in the tumus of gidin, makes the animal trafer, any of the gidin are cut, and, um, uh, okay, so now, veterinary instinct is a couple of different reasons why they happen. Most of them have to do with infections or arthritis that would happen when the chicken is, you know, well before shrita. Uh, and when those would happen, you'd usually be able to tell from the outside. There would be signs from the outside that there's something wrong with this chicken's leg. Uh, you see, if even, even when the chicken was alive, you'd see that something was wrong with it, some kind of something going on over there. But there are some chickens that don't have it because of infection or arthritis, but rather they have it because of stress, just the being thrown around or um, not being able to stand up or having a hard time, and it causes their these tendons to snap. And that particularly seems to be a problem close to Shrita in the transportation, like getting them into a truck to get them to the slaughterhouse and then out of the truck and you know all the places they have to move back and forth, um, potentially cause a problem. And the significance for us is that if that happens, it probably wouldn't happen with enough time for it to develop some kind of inflammation or something that would be noticeable on the outside. Okay, so um, in which case, you'd, the only way you'd find it is if you actually cut open the leg or the shank that we would do, we'd cut open the shank um, to see if it was there. So um, again, this is not talked about much for chickens in Chubis Farm. The idea of uh, tumors like eating, having a problem, of course it is, um, but it seems that the way we raise our chickens nowadays is more of a problem, either because, as I mentioned, because of the transportation, or because they lift so many hundreds or thousands of chickens together, you know, diseases spread more easily, uh, whichever the reason is. Um, and it seems that in Eretz Yisrael, the, the problems of tumors like are very common, um, to the point that they've basically always checked it. They always checked chickens for this problem of tumors like to make sure they weren't a trafer. Um, in, in America, in, <coughs> in, people did not used to check them. It was not common for them to be checked. Um, and and they, they didn't check because it was, it was so rare to have it that they didn't bother to check it. Um, one of the people who knows a lot about this thing, Kaczynski, um, he, he said, and he had been trained in Eretzel. He knew what, what they would look for, what look, would look from the outside. Again, in Eretzel, well, some of the places don't even cut them open. They just watch them go by to see if, there's, if they look diseased, if they look unhealthy. Um, he says in America, maybe one in a thousand birds would have it. So one in a thousand is obviously not me and Amatsi. Um, it's not an easy thing like our merchants said. You could just see it. Uh, so they didn't bother. They didn't, no one ever paid any attention to it. However, because he, Rabbi Kishitsky, had knew about this. He had been trained. He had actually what it looked like to see from the outside. All of a sudden, he would notice in some places that it was getting worse. It would go from 1,000, 1,500, 200. Uh, all of a sudden, there were places that there were 10, 15% of the, of the chickens were having this problem. So something was going wrong. Something was odd that all of a sudden, it was starting to look like the birds in Earth as well, which we had never had beforehand. So they spent some time looking at it. Um, Rabbi Seth Mamba, also from the OU, went to a bunch of different places and treated and eventually he tra traced it down to a specific uh, person who was sending shipping birds in the New York, Pennsylvania area. And that went to that person and said to him, what's going on that your birds are all of a sudden having this problem? He says, oh, I, I, I know exactly what the problem is. They tried some kind of a new uh, shot, a new inoculation they were giving them, and somehow that gave the birds some, a different virus, and that virus is what was causing the problem in the they get in. And as soon as they stopped it, bingo, the, the birds are, went back to being perfectly healthy again. Um, and basically the whole problem disappeared. Okay, so they had nailed it down to what the problem was. 
but it just made people more aware of the issue. So people took different approaches. Rabelsky told them, you know, since in America this is very uncommon, all you need to do is do a sample. So before a batch, before you approve a batch of you know ten thousand or twenty thousand chickens to be used, take a couple, a few hundred of them, check them out, and if they have just a few uh, tumors, like even don't worry about it. If they have more, I think the number is three percent, more than that have have a problem, then you have to check every chicken or reject the batch altogether. So the point being is that really the Ramos says in Sim Pedalid that you're not allowed to rely on sampling when when something is uh, he's talking about insect when something is infested you're not allowed to rely on sampling. In this case, it's appropriate because in this case, even it, it's not, it doesn't seem to be Matsui. And since it's not Matsui, you're not going to check really all together. We're just checking to be careful and to you know, worry about what might be out there. So for that, it's good enough to just do a sampling. There's so other reasons why sampling might be okay over here. So that's what Belsky said is just do a sampling. Um, and if the batch seems to be not very infested, doesn't have many, I'm sorry, had have tumors and kidney problems, then you could use the whole batch. All the Hashkachas didn't take it like that. And other Hashkachas said, listen here, now that we know there could be a problem in America also, they want every single bird checked. Um, every single bird checked is quite an undertaking. I mean, that's that's a number of bite who have to stand there, catching, you know, checking every bird as it goes by in the line after Shrita. Um, but again, some, some places have taken that on to assume that there may be a problem, uh, and therefore they have to check um, every single bird.